Hi Year 3 and Year 4, welcome back. It's Thursday today and it's our final learning journey lesson of the week. Although this learning journey is going to be a little bit different because tomorrow is actually a bank holiday because it is VE Day. Now what I'd like you to do today, we're just going to break away from our science learning journey just for today because I think it's important that we do a little bit of learning and a little bit of thinking about why we are celebrating um, and remembering tomorrow as um, VE Day um, and do a little bit of research and work around that. So we're not forgetting about our science learning journey, we're just going to put it in, on hold until Monday and focus on what VE Day is today. So we're going to watch this short film that explains what VE Day and also VJ Day were and the events that led to the end of the war. So watch carefully because I'm going to ask you to do an activity afterwards. By 1945, the Second World War had gone on for nearly six years of bloodshed and sacrifice. But things were beginning to change. Following the success of D-Day, the Allied armies in Western Europe from Britain, France, Canada and the United States started to advance on Berlin from the West. Meanwhile, Soviet forces were attacking from the East, leaving Nazi Germany surrounded. On the 7th of May, 1945, Nazi German officials agreed to a complete surrender. Special issues of newspapers were printed to announce the surrender and news that the war in Europe was finally over spread very quickly. Details circulated that the next day, the 8th of May, would be a public holiday known as Victory in Europe Day, or VE Day. On VE Day, the Prime Minister Winston Churchill and the Royal Family appeared on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. They were met by a huge crowd and chants of We Want the King for the reigning King George VI. The royal family made eight appearances on the balcony that day to celebrate with the people. And dancing, music and other celebrations continued into the night. Alan recalls seeing the celebrations in London as he went on his paper round the next day. People had had sing songs, bonfires, no bonfires allowed uh, uh, for six years. And here we are with all this timber, people have carried piano and other musical instruments out into the street and there's been a lot of jollity but I went to bed reasonably early because I've got to get up at six and get this news out and I went round my paper round where everyone had a fire, bonfire in the street, um, I kicked the embers back in and got all the fires going again and uh, that was my contribution to VE Day. You know, everyone had one thing in common, they'd all survived. And, and it was very, very happy. But even though the war had ended in Europe, VE Day was not the end of the Second World War. Fighting continued in the Asia-Pacific region. While Germany had surrendered, Japan continued to fight. The US had developed a terrifying weapon called the atomic bomb. In August 1945, they used this bomb on the city of Hiroshima in Japan destroying almost the entire city. Three days later, another atomic bomb was dropped on the Japanese city of Nagasaki, resulting in even more devastation. On the same day, troops from the Soviet Union fought their way into northern China, which had been ruled by the Japanese since 1931. Wanting to avoid further destruction and unable to stop the Soviet advance, Japan called for an end to the war and surrendered on the 15th of August, 1945. This became known as VJ Day, Victory Over Japan Day. Did you know VE Day and VJ Day marked the end of hostilities and that soldiers, sailors and airmen would soon be coming home? But just because the fighting was over didn't mean everything had been fixed. Rationing continued until 1954 nearly 10 years after the war had ended. And many women were not allowed to keep the important roles they'd taken on during the war. 
Despite the widespread celebrations after the war, many people also had bittersweet reactions. They had lost so much in the conflict. Their homes, their friends, and for some, their family. Alan lost his mother in the war during a bombing. At the time, the uh, feel was, keep a stiff upper lip, you're not to show them that you're upset, and, and I didn't. But years later, I was, because there's nothing like your mother in terms of warmth and, uh, and uh, encouragement and, and uh, that, that we missed. The war had come to an end and the Allies had been victorious. But for everyone who survived, their lives had been changed forever. Okay, I hope you enjoyed watching that video. It's really important that we remember what happened in, during the Second World War and that we think about it 75 years on. So, I thought today it would be really, really good if we could accept Dan Snow's VE Day Challenge. So, after watching that video, you might want to do a little bit more research for yourself about VE Day. There were lots and lots of street parties, lots of celebrations, and unfortunately, this for this year, the 75th year, lots of things were planned, but given our current situation, we can't do that now. So it's important that we still remember and commemorate the 75th um, anniversary year. So, Dan Snow set a VE Day challenge. Let's watch him now. 2020 marks a very special anniversary. It's 75 years since the end of the Second World War. When that war came to an end in Europe, it was on a day known as VE Day, Victory in Europe Day. Now this year we are launching a special campaign to commemorate that. We want you to tell us what you've learned about VE Day. So send us a picture, a poem, a story about someone who might have lived through those times, or a fake front page of a newspaper telling people that the war was over. Or you can make a video, like a, a news report, if you send it to me on Instagram or on Twitter, just please use my name at the History Guy and also tag in DCMS. You can also email it to ve vjday 75 at culture.gov.uk. So let's see what you've got. A selection will be featured on the official government VE Day website alongside my History Hit channel. I can't wait to see what you're going to send in. Okay, so the challenge set is this. We'd like you to think about how would you, you would tell the story of VE Day today. So you could write a short newspaper report, okay, to say what was happening in the style of today or perhaps 75 years ago. Make a short video that tells me all you know about VE Day, either in the style of 75 years ago or how you would tell it today. You could design a newspaper front page or article. You could even write me a poem or do a drawing or another piece of art. On um, Dojo, I will put up some links to some colouring pages, some word searches, some things that you can do as well on there. You could Maybe you've got someone at home that you know was involved in the war, maybe your grandparents that you could have a chat with over the phone, you could ask them about it, or you could ask your parents if they know anyone, or you could even write a little short play about the E-Day, it's completely up to you. So I'd like you to do a little bit of research and then be creative about how you tell the story of the E-Day to me. I can't wait to see some of your pictures or your videos or your newspaper reports. You can find out lots and lots of information online. If you want to, you can submit it to Dan Snow and the VE Day Challenge, but you don't have to. But make sure you do upload it to Class Dojo and we can share all of that with your teachers. Okay, good job guys and enjoy the long weekend. Stay home, stay safe and make sure that you're looking after your families and you're looking after yourself.